In this video, I'm gonna be focusing on a job that as photographers, we all kinda of hate, I think, and that is culling. But I'm gonna to talk to you about software that I've been using for about a year now, and it has changed everything. Hi guys, my name is Steve Gerrard. I am a British photographer now based in Canada. And today I'm gonna to be talking about culling, which probably just below taxes is one of the jobs that we least look forward to. So anything that's gonna help us get that job done quicker and more effectively is gonna be something that we should all be paying attention to. Now, if you're not sure what I mean by culling, I'm just talking about taking all the images from a shoot or from a wedding or whatever it is, and going through those and picking out the images that you're actually gonna edit from the shoot. Now, up until recently, I've been using Photo Mechanic for my culling, which a lot of photographers will know. And it's been great. It's been fast and super easy. For some reason, every now and then they update it, but I can't tell any difference every time I update it. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I'm sure there's stuff going on behind the scenes that I don't really understand. But in the last year, I have been using a program called Narrative Select, which is still in the beta form, but it's so intuitive and uses AI to help you color your images. And I'm gonna talk you through it and explain exactly what it does and why it's been a game changer for me. Now, if like me, you photograph a lot of people, Narrative Select is gonna change the way you do things and speed up your workflow like nobody's business. Just wait until you see what I'm gonna show you. Now I've been photographing people for the best part of 15 years, whether they're a band on stage or a couple getting married or families or portraits, but almost all of the shoots that I do focus around people. And one thing that Narrative Select does really well is help you cull out images with people in them. Now I've been a narrative user for quite a while because I use their blogging software, but it was in 2020 that I started using their culling software, which is Narrative Select. And it's changed everything. And I'm not using Photo Mechanic for culling anymore, only for my ingesting of my pictures. So I really wanna get into it and tell you all about this new software and let's do that. Now, okay, so here we are in Narrative Select and this is kind of the first thing that shows up when you open the software. As you can see, I've already loaded in some other shoots before, but if we wanted to create a new project, we're gonna click here. And I really like the design, like it's just a very sort of classy modern design with their nice cool graphics. And actually I did a little bit of a test with Amber and Danny's pictures. I just loaded in 662 pictures and in select, it took 19 seconds to load in 662 pictures. And I did the same with Photo Mechanic and it took 16 seconds. So Photo Mechanic is a little bit quicker just to load in, but it's negligible. Obviously, the more pictures you have, the longer it's gonna take. But as you'll see, once we've got everything loaded in, Narrative Select is a different ball game altogether. So let's create a project. We're gonna click on here, and then we can either ingest it straight from the card, which I probably would never do, or we can choose a folder, and we're gonna choose one which is actually on our SSD. And I want to load in Jody and Dane's originals. And there are 7,502 images here. So I'm going to load those in. That's where we give it a name. So I'm just going to give it their name, which is Jody and Dane. This is from a wedding in Italy that I shot actually a couple of years ago now. I'm going to start loading those in. And you can see the progress going here. And that is in real time, 7,502 images. Still scanning them. It's capturing uh, some more data from there as well. And boom. And this is part of the reason that I love Narrative Select so much is to do with the face data that they give you in the app. 
So it takes them a while to kind of go through 7,500 images and assess all those. So it's just saying that some of the features won't be available straight away and you just have to wait. So I'm going to click got it. And down here on the side, you can see we've got these. We can kind of scroll down and see all the pictures. And then in the main area, we've got a massive image. If we click I on the right hand side, it's going to give us some information about the actual image file. And then we can click I to click out of that. We can make this picture bigger or smaller. We can zoom in, but most of the time I just want to leave it as is. And as I mentioned in another video, I shoot all my images with the previews in black and white. So if you're wondering why all these are in black and white, they do actually have color in the file, but because Narrative Select is pulling the information from the JPEG preview, I am seeing everything in black and white, which is fine because I'm not bothered about the colors at this point. All I wanna know is if it's a good image, if things are in focus and all that good stuff. So the colors don't really matter to me at the moment. And I actually kind of like just seeing things very simple without all the color and I can just look at the composition and where the light's falling and again, if things are in focus. So that's why it's in black and white. And when we load it into Lightroom, all the colors will come flooding back as you'll see later on. So you do have some display options. You can select like individual images like this, or if you press G, it will take you to more of a loop lookout. So you can see groups all together, but I actually prefer to go through them one by one. And up here you have the option to sort them by file name, star rating, capture time, or color if you've already started rating things. And then if you press Y, you can switch the film strip down to the bottom instead of having it at the side. I kind of like it at the side. Or you can even get rid of the film strip altogether by hitting Command Y and then you've just got a nice big picture and you can start scrolling through right like that and you can see how quick these pictures are loading but let's talk about this little feature here and this is what i was talking about when i mentioned the face data so underneath you can see it's given me a message saying 97 eyes open 86 nearly in focus so that's basically telling me that the picture is in focus and he has got his eyes open and same for Jody there, she's got her eyes open and 77 nearly in focus. Actually, these are fine because if I click on their faces like that, I can actually zoom in on the side and see that they are in focus. Click on the individual face and I'll shift between the two. This comes into play much nicer when we get to the group shots, which we'll show you soon. Now, just quickly, if I go into the preferences up here, then we go to the assessments. This gives you a better idea of what these face assessments are actually doing. So you can see there's a colored chart here which shows the assessments for the faces. And on this face here, you can see she's got a gray bar and a gray dot. So that means that the eyes is being given a score of 88, which is out of 100. And that's really good because the eyes are open. And 79 says nearly in focus, but actually it looks perfectly in focus to me. So that's a really good score. Whereas this guy up here, he's still in focus. He still gets a score of 70, but his eyes are given a 30 because he's kind of squinting. So even though it's fine, it's showing that his eyes are not perfectly open. Whereas this guy, obviously, although he is in focus, his eyes are completely shut because he looks like he's <laughs> mid sneeze or something like that. So you've got the red, the yellow and the gray, and you can change it to your preferences if you want to switch to green as the in focus eyes open option up there, but I just keep it as is. So you may notice that these guys don't exactly look like a bride and groom just yet. And that is because this is the engagement shoot part of the time that we spent in Italy. I did an engagement shoot with them two days before their wedding where we got to wander around Positano, which is a pretty amazing city. So that was all good. But on here, you can see I'm getting the yellow dot, which means that even though they might look in focus, I'm getting a warning that they're actually nearly out of focus. So if I wanna just double check it, I can just click on Dane's face there. I can see, okay, it's not perfectly in focus. Click on Jodie's face, same thing. She's actually more out of focus. I think I was holding the camera above my head at this point to try and get some of the landscape in behind them. So that's probably why it wasn't perfectly focused 
But maybe that's a picture that I would want to keep, or maybe it's not. But at least I've got the option and I spot that it's out of focus from the warnings rather than trusting my eyes every time when I'm zooming through images on a cull. But if I did want to select this image when I'm culling, I would just hit a number one and that would give it a one star rating. And then at the end of the cull, I'm going to go through all my images that have got a one star rating and transfer those into Lightroom with just one click, which you'll see later. Now with this picture here, they're obviously very small in the frame. So their faces are just a little bit too small for the AI to pick up. But if we want to just check their in focus, we can just click on them like that and we can see absolutely fine. And actually that's one of my favorite pictures from their engagement shoot. Love it. It's great with all the colors, which ha, you'll have to trust me. And then on this photo, you can see that the focus is good. Nearly in focus, it says 77. That's going to be absolutely fine as far as I'm concerned. Let's click on a face. No worries. It's giving me a warning that his eyes are partially open, which he is kind of squinting just a little bit, but not too much. I'm not worried about that. So that would be a keeper. I'm going to hit one. So now we're into the wedding day and you can see I'm getting a red mark here for the eyes closed, which they're obviously closed for a reason. They're kissing. Nobody, no normal people kiss with their eyes open. Some people do, and it's always a bit weird. So just a note to everybody, if you're going to kiss your girlfriend or your wife, kiss with your eyes closed. But we are getting 77 out of 100 for in focus. And if I zoom in, we can see it's completely in focus. No worries there. And even on an image like this, which is obviously a bit underexposed, it's still working out. And it's, it's a pretty busy background, but it's still working out exactly where the faces are. It can tell that the eyes are closed, but that's okay because they're just in the moment. But I can see that we are nicely in focus, 93. So let's look at some group shots. Here's one taken from above with the girls. You can see everybody's eyes are open and in focus. And you can see how quick it's rendering the images, nice and fast. But see that yellow? That makes me think, ah, Something's wrong with this picture and all it is is that her eyes are a little bit closed and it's kind of lagged it, but it's nothing to worry about. But if you're worried about people having their eyes closed, just get them all to wear shades. Apart from this guy here who has glasses on, but this is still going to tell me eyes partially open, nearly in focus. Your man in the middle, nearly in focus at 82, but look, 100% wearing glasses. So it can even spot not only if the eyes are open or closed, but it'll tell you if they're wearing glasses. And as I skip through these, I can see that yellow warning on the guy who's taking his glasses off now, but it's telling me that his eyes are partially open. It's probably because it was a bright day and he's just a little bit squinty. So it's nothing to worry about. And we can go through. And then I think after this, I brought the groom forward. Oh, now they're all taken off the glasses. So now we've got 13 people in an image and maybe we don't want to go through them one by one, which is what we would normally do if we were culling in Photo Mechanic. But up here, we can click to this little close-ups panel, click on that and boom, all the pictures from each individual person show up there. And we can quickly see if everybody is looking good, if they've got their eyes closed or weird uh, expressions on their face like this guy. But it's a really fast way of just double checking everybody. But if we didn't want to do that, we can just quickly click on their faces one by one. And it's going to go boom, 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 boom. Easy. So then I brought the groom forward away from the rest. And so you would only expect him really to be in focus. He's got his eyes pretty much open as far as I'm concerned, 46 but 92 in focus, so we're all good. The people at the back, you would expect to be out of focus, so I'm not worried about any of that. So what I'm looking for is the eyes and any expressions like this guy. And again, if I skip through one by one, you can see how quick it is. Okay, so that gives you a good idea of how the AI is working, but watch this. Up here, we have this distill button. And if I click on that, it says it distills using eye focus and expression factors to reject the worst images in each scene. In other words, a sequence of similar images will leave at least one image per scene and may reject no images from the scene if they are of a similar quality and contain no people. It's easy to undo if you don't like the results and we can check that. Simply select all the images with the rating that distill applied and clear the rating from the rate menu. So. There's different strengths that we can use from low 
which is going to reject fewer images to high, which is going to reject more. So let's set it on medium and we're going to apply a red color rating to the rejected images. And it's telling us here, it's already worked out, it's going to reject 713 images from the 7,500. So approximately 10% of the images will be rejected. And then that's going to be using the AI and we're going to hit distill and that's going to work out which 713 pictures they are. And now if I go up here and click on the red, it will show me 713 images, which straight away you can see why it's got rid of this one. And this one, eyes closed, bit of a weird expression. See that one's not too bad. It's telling me eyes closed, nearly in focus, and I might want to keep that. So then I can just press zero to undo the rating and take it out of that selection. But you will find that a good chunk of these are going to be the ones that you would have got rid of anyway. On this one, they both got their eyes closed and they're out of focus. But this one, they are in focus. They got their eyes closed because they're kissing. So I would hit zero to leave that out uh, focus. But I would normally set this distill to the lowest strength. Then they're going to work out how many pictures on the lowest strength. So it's gone down from 713 to 495. So that's going to get rid of 7% of the images straight away. I'll have a quick look through them just to make sure there's nothing that I want to keep, but almost certainly there isn't going to be. And that's just saved me a good half an hour of my life. Okay, so a big group shot, pretty much everybody at the wedding. Let's ignore the fact that it's not exactly composed perfectly, but you can see that it's still picking up almost every face. Obviously not the people who are turning away. There's always one, right? So we can see that the bride is 71% in focus. And on this one, the groom is obviously right next to us. So they're both in focus, but we can see there's a few people who have got the red, which the red line means that their eyes are closed. So if we click on this girl here, we can see definitely eyes closed. But again, we have a big group of people here. And if, if we hit this, look at that. All the faces, well, most of the clear faces anyway, are gonna come up and anything with a red line underneath it is showing as they've got their eyes closed this girl looks like she hasn't got her eyes closed this guy either but for the most part it's pretty accurate and rather than zooming in on everybody's face individually and kind of scrolling around trying to see if anybody's out of focus we can quickly see everybody in one simple panel right there and it's just super fast now even with a picture like this during the speeches you can see this guy is giving the speech so we want him to be in focus, eyes are open, but it's even picking up on all these people that are completely out of focus in the background. This guy's, you can hardly see him at all, but it's still telling me that his eyes are open, even though it's telling me he's out of focus, but that's fine because we want these people out of focus. So it works really, really well, even if the people are not the subjects of the frame. And one more thing you can do if you press command bracket, you can rotate the images super fast. Obviously, we don't really want to rotate this one, but if it was something that we wanted to rotate, we can just move it around like that. Don't get dizzy. And I would select this with a one. I don't give pictures different ratings. It's either a yes or a no from me. So I just hit one for yes and skip for no. And then I would select all the images that I've rated with a number one and then command A to select all of those. And instead of doing what I would do in photo mechanic, which would now be to export all of those from photo mechanic into another folder and then open Lightroom and import everything into Lightroom. So it's like a few different steps. With narrative select, I just go up into the top right hand corner here. You'll see it says ship selected images to Lightroom and boom, Lightroom opens. And instantly you can see all my selections which are highlighted and then I can start importing them with my preset and that's it. And then it's onto the editing stage. And you can see as soon as these start importing, all the colors start popping back. And these are all imported with my preset and then I can just start editing from there. Uh, 
Uh, just one last thing. If you're interested in seeing this full wedding, uh, it is on my blog, and I will leave a link in the description below if you want to go and check that out. So there you go, that is Narrative Select and that is what I'm using to call all my images from every shoot I do these days. I would be really interested to know what you guys think about it. Are you gonna check it out? Do you think it's something you might use? Leave me a comment in the uh, comments below. And if you got anything out of this video, if you found it useful at all, please just drop me a like below and maybe even subscribe because we've got lots more videos coming up and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers guys.